Let us try implementing generic methods. First of all, let's recap all the functionality of generic methods. So firstly, we learned that there is a way to define a generic method. What we gave was a name to it, and then what we defined was a method. And somewhere in that method, we define what was the parameter that was being dispatched. In this particular case, there's only one argument, so therefore, that's the one being dispatched on. Secondly, we learn that there is a way to register instances of that function. What that means is for each structure, we had a way to explain how that structure was implementing that particular case of the generic method. Thirdly, there is a way to call a generic method. So what we've learned was we have a way to, when you give, uh, when you call a function on quote, and you pass it some value, and then there is dispatching recursively going on in the case of apply. So we need to at least declare this uh, or implement these three functionalities. How do we declare a generic function? How we register an instance of a set function? And how we call the generic function? So first, let's think about what is being implicit here. So when we define a function, there is nothing implicit, uh, sorry, a generic function. There is nothing implicit. We simply say the name and we define um, the parameter that is uh, implicit, that is, sorry, uh, being dispatched on. When we register an instance, uh, what is implicit here? Well, the registry itself, right, where we store all the things being registered is somehow implicit. We are connecting it to quotable, but there is some kind of storage, you know, where we store each um, struct as being assigned to a certain function, in this case, this function. So this registry is what is being implicit. So additionally to this, there is some kind of runtime information you need, right? You need to know for each structure, what is the implementation? What is the function that you've implemented for each structure to be called when the parameter uh, being dispatched uh, is found to be of that uh, particular struct? Finally, we need a way to call. Uh, so here we're just showing the argument of a quote. But how do we call a certain quote, a uh, generic method? So again, when you call, uh, it's implicit, you're just calling it. Um, so where is this uh, registry it is also implicit. So we need to make the registry implicit, right? The runtime information that holds um, what? What does what does a, re a registry contain? Well, it must contain. Uh, it's simply you can think of it basically as a map, right? That goes from the values are the types or the structs, and those are the keys, and the values have to be the implementation of each type, right? Oops. So, uh, what do we need? We need to know um, one more thing. Forgot to say. So we need to know which parameter is generic, right? Because it could be the second parameter being generic or the third. We have only learned the first one, but you, you have flexibility there as well. Um, so if we recap where we, the three parts, on declaring, we have to say um, which parameter is being dispatched on. Um, and we can just assume that there's only one generic function for the sake of simplicity. Uh, additionally, we need to know um, which function and is assigned to which type. And thirdly, when you call it, um, you need to be able to look up a certain value to know what the implementation you should use, which implementation you should use. So in summary, we have these questions. Declaring a generic function, we need to know which argument is being dispatched on, how many arguments does the function have, and what is an instance, right? Something being registered. So the instance is the keys are predicates and the values are functions as values. By predicates, I mean, uh, is this, you know, our value question mark or our number question mark and so on. Uh, so we can implement this very easily. We define a struct for generic and we say, what is the index and what are the instances? So things that have been uh, implemented.
we can create our factory to just say my generic and I give the index. And currently the list of uh, functions being registered is initialized with empty. Then we can also define an instance. So an instance has a type, right? Question mark, which is this function that returns Boolean or not. That returns Boolean according to whether or not the value is of that type and the function that implements the generic. So if we want to define a particular, so in this case, I'm defining the method for quotable or bulls. The way we do it is given some generic, we say that we want to dispatch on the first argument, and then we could initialize it with uh, a Boolean. And here is the implementation given a B, it invokes um, the vol of B. So note a few things. First of all, for the registry, we're using a list. And why are we wa why do we want to use a list? Uh, because we want to go through in an, um, the registration in a ordered way. That is good for predictability of what's going on. If we just have, uh, it also allows us to you know overwrite in a very obvious way, first in, first out, depending on how we go through the elements of the list. Next thing we want to do is we want to define registration. So how do we do it? Well, we have one of these generic objects and what we want to register is the predicate and the function, the current implementation. So it becomes very simple. How do we update the generic? We create a new one that uses the same index and takes the current instances and we add cons, right, of a new instance, which is that structure that we just defined. So pretty easy to register. So how do we call a function? Well, calling, we use generic apply. First argument has to be this generic object uh, or struct. Uh, and then we have the arguments that we are passing. Okay, so then what we need to do? Um, let's say you have certain, in, in the, this generic, this particular generic, you have some instances there, right? That were registered. What you need to know is you need to look up the arguments and look at the index. So the argument in position uh, I, right? Where I is the index, the index that you've supplied when you created this generic. And then you need to look up in these arguments, that particular argument in that index. And then you do the dispatching. How do you do the dispatching? You go through the list and you check the list of instances and you see if that list is applied, can be applied to that particular argument. And if it is, you call the particular instant with the arguments provided. So it should be pretty straightforward. So how do we implement uh, lookup? Well, we can actually use something pretty easy, which is this function memf, uh, which checks if um, this function is applied to a certain uh, element of the list. So lookup becomes pretty obvious, pretty easy if you know how to use memf. So what it will do, it will return. Um, what we do is we take the instance and if the instance type is true, then what we do is we call, uh, we take the instance type and we check return true if uh, the instance type uh, returns true to that element. So this is the same thing as asking is if you, let's say this were the instance of a number, then this whole thing would be equivalent to our call a number question mark of element. Uh, and here you will get basically what memf is going to do. It's going to return the particular instance that matches uh, this predicate. So how, what, how does the implementation work? First thing we need to do, we take the index and we get the argument that we need to dispatch on. Secondly, we apply by looking up the function associated with this element that is being generic. And then we call this function with the list of arguments provided. So simply just two lines of code are enough to implement generic apply. So as you can see, this is pretty easy. Easy to implement, right? Um, so finally, we can uh, call this code just by instantiating the generic, saying which 
as I mentioned before, which index is being uh, dispatched on, and then providing the current uh, instances and finally calling with generic apply. Um, there are a few limitations and things that could be improved. Firstly, the lookup is linear. So the, the, the logic of lookup uh, is according to M memf, basically. Uh, there's also no error reporting. Um, you don't, what, what if your list is empty or what if you don't even give it a list? So there's some error protect, some defensive programming that is missing. Um, and then do we want to enforce that all instances have the same number of arguments or not? That can actually check that runtime. Um, but ideally, if you had a language that is expressive enough, you could even enforce this at compile time. And that is basically it. Uh, feel free to copy paste this example and play it with your, with you and play it, uh, in your own leisure. Okay. I hope you had fun today. Have a good one.